we're going to start by taking a rectangle, which is 10 centimeters by four centimeters. Then we're going to enlarge this rectangle to create a similar rectangle by scale factor two. This will mean all of the lengths of the rectangle will be twice as long. So on the top here, we have 10 centimeters, and if we double that, it becomes 20. On the left-hand side here, it's four centimeters, and if we double that, it becomes eight. So the lengths of the rectangle were multiplied by two, but does this apply to the area? Well, the area of the left rectangle here is 10 by four, so 10 times four, 40 centimeters squared. For the right rectangle, it's 20 times eight, which is 160 centimeters squared. We can see that whilst the lengths have been doubled, the area hasn't been doubled. In fact, it's been multiplied by four. 40 times four gives you 160. At first, this might seem surprising, but it does make sense. Since the 10 centimeters has been doubled to 20, and also the four has been doubled to eight, and then we multiplied those together, the overall result of that is multiplying by four. So what we have here is two different scale factors at play. We have the scale factors for the length, which is two, and the scale factors for the area, which is four. Now let's have a look at what would happen if we enlarge by scale factor three. So we make the shape three times as big. So we do 10 times three, which is 30, and four times three, which is 12. If we now do the area of the larger rectangle, 30 times 12 is 360. So this time we have the length being multiplied by three, but the area has been multiplied by nine, since nine times 40 is 360. So for this one, the length scale factor is three, but the area scale factor is nine. Some of you may spot that this nine here comes from three times three, or three squared. So if we know the scale factor for the length, we can find the scale factor for the area by squaring it. So three squared gives you nine. For instance, if we had this table here of length scale factors and area scale factors. So if we had a length scale factor of two, the corresponding area scale factor would be two squared, and two squared is four. If the length scale factor was five, the area scale factor would be five squared, which is 25. If the length scale factor was eight, the area scale factor is eight squared, which is 64. Sometimes scale factors are written as fractions, so if the length scale factor was three quarters, the area scale factor would be three quarters squared. Three quarters squared is three times three and four times four, so nine over 16. So we now know what happens to the areas when we enlarge a shape, but what about volume? Well, for this, we need to look at a 3D shape. Let's take this cuboid here with these dimensions. We're going to enlarge this by scale factor two, so we're going to double all of the lengths. The length on the bottom five will become 10, the two will double to four, and the three will double to six. So let's work out the volume of each of these cuboids. For the cuboid on the left, we'd multiply five, two, and three, which will give you a volume of 30 centimeters cubed. And on the right, 10 times four times six gives you a volume of 240 centimeters cubed. So the length scale factor must be two, since we multiplied the lengths by two, but the volume scale factor is actually eight. 30 times eight gives you 240. So for this one, the length scale factor is two, and the volume scale factor is eight. This eight here comes from multiplying two by itself three times, or two to the power three. So if we know the length scale factor, we can work out the volume scale factor by cubing it. Let's return to that table from before and add in the volume scale factor. So to find the volume scale factor, we're going to cube the length scale factor. So for the first one, we have a length scale factor of two. So the volume one will be two to the power three, which is two times two times two, which is eight. For the next one along, the length scale factor was five. So the volume scale factor will be five to the power three, five times five times five again is one, two, five. For the next one, we have a length scale factor of eight. So the volume scale factor must be eight to the power three, eight times eight times eight is 512. And for the final one, the length scale factor was three quarters. So the volume one will be three quarters cubed. To do this, we can do three cubed and four cubed. Three cubed is 27 and four cubed is 64. So we have 27 over 64. In an exam question, you could be given some scale factors and asked to work out the other ones. So for instance, if we take this table here and fill in some of the scale factors, the question may ask you to complete the table. So if we look at the first one here, the length scale factor is three. So the area scale factor will be three squared, which is nine. And the volume scale factor at the bottom will be three cubed, which is 27. In this next column, we only have the area scale factor. We can work out the length scale factor though by doing the reverse process. To get the area scale factor when you know the length scale factor, you square it. So going in the opposite direction, you would square root. So if we do the square root of 49, which is seven, we find the length scale factor. We can now cube the length scale factor to get the volume scale factor, and that's seven to the power three, 
which is 343. We do a similar idea for this final column here. We only know the volume scale factor, which is the cube of the length scale factor. So we can go backwards by doing the cube root. The cube root of 1000 is 10. We then find the area scale factor by squaring this, 10 squared is 100. And that's the table complete. Now that you understand how the scale factors work, you're ready to use this information to find missing lengths, areas, or volumes in shapes. Let's have a look at what an exam question could look like. So for this one, we're given two shapes, which are called A and B, and we're told they're similar. And here's a picture of those shapes. Then we're told some information about shape A, its area is 12 centimeters squared. And we're asked to work out the area of the other shape, shape B. Looking at this diagram, I can see we have two of the corresponding lengths, three on the bottom of A and 12 on the bottom of B. This means I can work out the length scale factor. Since I'm trying to work out the area of B in this question, I need to think about the scale factors going from A to B. So I'm going to write that down to help me remember, and going from A to B. So the length scale factor from A to B is whatever 12 divided by 3 is, which is 4. So you can see the lengths on shape B are 4 times as large. Now we've been asked to work out the area of shape B. So we don't need the length scale factor, we need the area scale factor. But we know this is the square of the length scale factor. So if we do 4 squared, we get 16. So the area scale factor is 16. In the question we've been told the area of shape A, so we can work out the area of shape B by multiplying the area of shape A, which is 12, by the scale factor, which is 16. So we do 12 times 16, which is 192. So the answer to the question, the area of shape B is 192 centimeters squared. The same idea works with volume as well. For this one, we've got cylinders X and Y that are similar, and here they are. We will be told the volume of one of the cylinders. So for this one, the volume of cylinder X is 96 centimeters cubed, and we'll be asked to find the volume of the other one. In this question, I can see once again, we have two corresponding lengths. We're trying to find out the volume of cylinder Y, so I'm going to think about my scale factors as going from x to y. So for the length scale factor, I would divide 9 by 6, which is 1.5. So the lengths on cylinder y are 1.5 times as big. Now I want the volume of cylinder y this time, so I need the volume scale factor. I can work this out by cubing the length scale factor. So the volume scale factor is the length scale factor, which is 1.5, and then cubed. If you cube 1.5, you get 3.375. So this means the volume of shape Y must be 3.375 times bigger than the volume of shape X. So I know the volume of shape X, it's 96 centimeters cubed. So to find the volume of Y, I would do the volume of X, which was 96, multiplied by the volume scale factor, 3.375. And I'd use a calculator for this, of course, that's 324. Now let's try another question where it goes the other way around. So for this one, we've got two shapes that are P and Q, and here they are. And we're going to be given some information. The surface area of solid Q is 3.2, and we want to work out the surface area of solid P. So you can spot the corresponding lengths again, which means we'll be able to work out the length scale factor, but this time we're trying to work out a surface area of solid P. So we want the scale factors to go from Q to P. So let's do the length scale factor, and this time I'd need to divide them the other way around. So 0.93 divided by 1.24. And if you use a calculator for this, you'll find that 0.75. In this one, I've been asked for a surface area, so I need the area scale factor, which would be the square of the length scale factor, so 0.75 squared. If you calculate this, it's 0.5625. So I know the surface area of Q given in the question, so to find the surface area of P, all I do is take the surface area of Q, which is 3.2, and multiply it by the area scale factor, 0.5625. Using a calculator for this, we get 1.8. So the surface area of P is 1.8 meters squared. In this next question, we have solids M and N, and they are similar. And then we're told the surface area of both of them and the volume of one of them. And we're asked to work out the volume of the other. Now this question has two more differences. Firstly, there's no diagrams of the solids M and N. And sometimes this happens in exam questions, but we don't actually need the diagram to solve this problem. Secondly, we haven't been given any of the lengths. In the previous questions we've looked at, we always had two lengths, so we could work out the length scale factor. We are, however, given the surface areas of both of them, so we could divide these to work out the area scale factor. So let's do that first. And notice in this one we're trying to work out the volume of n, so we're going to think about scale factors going from m to n. 
So to find the area scale factor, I would do the surface area of n divided by the surface area of m. So 1728 divided by 300, which gives you 5.76. Now in this question, I'm trying to find a volume, but I can't go from the area scale factor straight to a volume scale factor. What we need to do here is go back to a length scale factor first. Remember from earlier to go from area to length, we square root. So the length scale factor will be the square root of the area one, 5.76, which gives you an answer of 2.4. We can now go from this length scale factor to the volume scale factor. To get the volume scale factor, we cube the length one, so 2.4 cubed, which gives you 13.824. Now that we have the volume scale factor, we're ready to answer the question. We've been told the volume of m, and we're after the volume of n. So this will be equal to the volume of m, which is 240, multiplied by the volume scale factor, 13.824. Use a calculator for this, and you'll find the answer is 3317.76 centimeters cubed. Sometimes the information given in a question is using a ratio rather than actual numbers. Let's have a look at one of these. So here we have prisms A and B that are similar, and here's a picture of them. And you'll see we actually have no information about them, but we're told the ratio of their heights, which is 2 to 3. We're also told the volume of prism A, and we need to work out the volume of prism B. To do a question that involves ratios, I like to create a table, and the table is going to be the ratios of the lengths, the areas, and the volumes. And at the top of this table, I label the shapes. We've got prism A and prism B. In this question, we've been given the ratio of the heights. The heights are examples of lengths, so we can use this ratio as the ratio of the lengths, which is 2 to 3. To get the ratio of the areas, we square the values that are in the ratio of the lengths. So if we do 2 squared, which is 4, and 3 squared, which is 9, the ratio of the areas must be 4 to 9. The same idea works for volume, so if we cube the numbers from the length one, 2 cubed or 2 to the power 3 is 8, and 3 cubed or 3 to the power 3 is 27. Since we're looking for a volume in this question, it's the ratio of the volume we need. So for A to B, the ratio of the volumes are 8 to 27. We've been told in the question the volume of prism A, so I'm going to write that underneath the A. All I need to do now is work out what I multiply 8 by to get to 280, and that's 35. You can work that out by doing 280 divided by 8. If I multiply the 8 by 35, I should also multiply the 27 by 35. 27 times 35 is 945. So if the volume of A is 270, the volume of B must be 945, and that's the answer to the question. Let's have a look at a second example that involves ratios. So this time we've got solids G and H that are similar, and we've been given the ratio of the volumes this time. We're told the surface area of H, and we need to work out the surface area of G. So like we did in the previous question, we're going to draw a table for the ratios. And we've got length, area, and volume, and the letters this time are G and H. So the ratio for volumes given in the question, we can put that at the bottom of the table, is 125 to 8. If we cube root these numbers, we'll find the ratio for the lengths. The cube root of 125 is 5, and the cube root of 8 is 2. Then if we square the ratio for the lengths, we'll get the ratio for the area. 5 squared is 25, and 2 squared is 4. In this question, we've been asked to work out the surface area of G, so it's the area ratio we need, which is 25 to 4. In the question, we were given the surface area of H, so we put that underneath H, and then we work out what we do to get from 4 to 124. If you divide 124 by 4, you get 31. So to go from 4 to 124, I multiply by 31. We can then multiply 25 by 31 as well, which gives you 775. So the surface area of G must have been 775. And that's the answer to the question. Sometimes we get questions that require us to think even more deeply. Let's have a look at one now. So in this one, we've got two prisms, D and E, and here they are. And we're told they're similar. And this is the information we're given. The area of the cross section of D is 24, the volume of E is 562.5, and the length of E is 15. And we can actually see that marked on the diagram. We're asked to work out the volume of D. Since there's so much different information in this question, I'm going to arrange it in a table. So we're going to have the length area and volume, and then the two shapes, shape D and shape E. So what do we know in this question? The area of the cross section of D is 24, so let's put that in the area part of the table. And the volume of E is 562.5, that goes down here. And the length of E is 15, that goes over here. So that's all the information we're given in the question. It looks as though we have a problem here because we don't have a pair of numbers. We're missing a length, we're missing an area, and we're missing a volume. 
so it appears that we can't calculate any of the scale factors. But there is a way to do it. This shaded area here is the cross section of D, and we know that's 24 centimeters squared. It's possible to work out the area of the cross section of E using the information we're given, and it relies on the fact that these shapes are prisms. To calculate the volume of a prism, you multiply the cross sectional area which has been shaded by the length of the shape. We know the length of the shape here for E is 15, and we know the volume as well, it's 562.5. So we must have multiplied the cross sectional area, which we don't know, by 15 to get 562.5. So we can do the reverse process and do 562.5 divide by 15 to get the cross sectional area, which is 37.5. So we can now put the cross sectional area of E into the table at 37.5. Now that we have both cross sectional areas, we can work out the area scale factor. In this question, we're trying to work out the volume of D, so we need to think about scale factors going from E to D. So to work out the area scale factor, I would do 24 divided by 37.5, which is 0 0.64. And that makes sense since D is a smaller shape. So we've managed to find the area scale factor, but we want the volume one since we're trying to find the volume of D. To do this, we're going to need the length scale factor first. The length scale factor will be the square root of the area one, so the square root of 0 0.64, which is 0 0.8. Now that we have the length scale factor, we can find the one for the volume by cubing this. So 0 0.8 cubed, which is 0 0.512. So we're now ready to answer the question. We have the volume scale factor and we know the volume of E. So to get the volume of D, we take the volume of E and multiply it by the scale factor. And this gives you an answer of 288 centimeters cubed. We're now going to look at one more final, quite tricky question. In this question, we have two solids, which are A and B, and they're similar. We're told the height of A and also the height of B. Then we're told the volume of A is 18.5 centimeters cubed more than the volume of B. Notice here that we haven't actually been given the volume of either of the shapes. We just know that one is 18.5 more than the other. And we're asked to work out the volume of B. Since we have both of the heights in this question, we can work out the scale factor for the length. In the question, we're trying to find the volume of B, so we're going to consider scale factors going from A to B. So the length scale factor would be the height of B divided by the height of A, or 6 divided by 8. You could write 6 divided by 8 as 6 over 8, which would simplify down to 3 quarters. You could write this as a decimal 0.75, but for this question, it's probably going to be easier to leave it as a fraction. You'll see why in a moment. Since we're trying to work out volume in this question, we'll cube this to work out the volume scale factor. So the volume scale factor is 3 quarters cubed, which is 27 over 64. Now at this point, we would normally multiply the volume scale factor by the volume given in the question to work out the remaining volume. But since we haven't been given either of the volumes in this question, we just know that one is 18.5 more than the other, we're going to need to take a different approach. Since we're trying to find the volume of B, we're going to call that X. Since the volume of A is more than this, 18.5 more, the volume of A must be x plus 18.5. Now to get the volume scale factor, you could also just divide the volumes by each other. So the volume scale factor must be the volume of B, which is x, divided by the volume of A, x plus 18.5. So what we have here is two ways of writing down the volume scale factor. We've got this one here, which is 27 over 64, but this one here, which is x over x plus 18.5. Since these are both the volume scale factor for this question, they must be equal to each other. So let's write them equal to each other, and we have an equation to solve. I'm going to start by multiplying both sides by 64. On the left side, this will cancel that 64, so we just have 27. And on the right side, when I multiply by 64, I get 64x over x plus 18.5. Now I'm going to multiply both sides by the denominator on the right side, so x plus 18.5. When I multiply this on the left, I need to use a bracket, so it'll be 27 lots of x plus 18.5, and on the right, this will cancel that denominator, so we just have 64x. We can expand this bracket on the left-hand side, 27 times x is 27x, 27 lots of 18.5 is 499.5, and of course, the right-hand side is 64x. Let's continue solving this over here. So we're going to subtract 27x from both sides. If you subtract it from the left, it cancels, so we've just got 499.5. And if you subtract 27x from 64x, you're left with 37x. We can then divide both sides by 37. 499.5 divided by 37 is 13.5. And on the right hand side, we'll just be left with 1x. So the value of x is 13.5, but the value of x is also the volume of b, which is what we're trying to find in this question. 
So we now know the answer to the question, the volume of B must be 13.5 centimeters cubed. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos. I've also put some exam questions on this topic in this video's description.